guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Chevy Tahoe, courtesy of Sioka Chevrolet in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So I wanted to hop in this one because I'm excited for this. I wanted to drive it because this may very well be the best full-size SUV that is available today. It's got realistic third row leg room and just a ton of cargo space overall. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 tahoe first one being the ls starting at 58,195, lt for 63,695, rst for 66,295, z71 four-wheel drive for 68,295, premier for 71,595, and lastly the high country being the one we are in today starting at 78,895 dollars that was all pricing for the rear wheel drive with the exception of the z71 at least if you wanted to add four-wheel drive you can do that simply add three thousand dollars then to any of those prices so as you can imagine with all of those different trim levels there are a couple different engine configurations available for the tahoe first one belonging to all trim levels but the high country that one is powered by a 5.3 liter direct injected v8 putting out 355 horsepower at 5600 rpm 383 pound feet of torque coming in at 4100 rpm power sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic zero to 60 time for that one approximately 7.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 15 in the city 20 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration and the one that we have today this one is specific to the high country trim level powering the beast is a 6.2 liter direct injected v8 420 horsepower 5600 rpm 460 pound feet of torque coming in at 4100 rpm power sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic zero to 60 time though 5.7 seconds is what car and driver clocked at. That's pretty impressive. With MPG numbers coming in at 14 in the city, 19 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel for that particular engine configuration. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test with our powerful 6.2 liter V8. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, you guys, here's our straightaway in three, two, one. Go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You would not think this SUV is as big as it is. Yeah, baby. That is plenty of an acceleration for the Tahoe. You guys probably heard me chirping a little bit at the acceleration. This thing is, it's heavy, but it can go, man. Like that is a very impressive acceleration. Sub six second, zero to 60 time in a vehicle the size of the Tahoe is absolutely insane. So definitely not going to have any issues of merging onto the highway that was even fun but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so four-wheel disc brakes of course do come standard as far as a 60 zero stopping distance goes that comes in at 122 feet which on paper insanely impressive especially for the size of this suv as far as braking feel goes it's actually fine I do feel like the braking feel on the Tahoe and Suburban is a little bit different than I'm used to. It's really different than any other vehicle that I've really driven. It's not a bad thing. It's just something that you got to get used to. You kind of have to press a little bit harder on the brake pedal if you need to come to a really, really good stop. But having said that, with most other vehicles, you just barely press on it. It comes to a quicker stop. But that number, 122 feet, that's insanely impressive. Typically, in this size of an SUV, you get mid to upper 130s, so 122 feet. You're not going to have any issues bringing this thing to a stop but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a coil over shock front suspension in the back multi-link rear suspension but i did want to mention an option for the high country only that is an adaptive air ride suspension that goes for 1465 dollars that's really going to give you the best quality ride humanly possible because you got the air suspension to give you that cushiony ride but it's adaptive as well so it's going to monitor each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road imperfections giving you a smoother ride but it's also going to tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering giving you a better handling so it gives you the best of both worlds so that one 
if you want the very best ride quality is the one that you're gonna wanna go with. So ride quality actually has been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So I personally have had no issues, so I like it. So anyways, as far as steering feel goes, it is weighted a little bit on the heavier side of things. So I do like that as well. A lot of times with SUVs, it's gonna be weighted on the looser side of things. It's more of a loosey goosey feel, but honestly in the Tahoe, it's the perfect steering feel. It's definitely on the heavier side of things. And as far as cabin noise goes, we are going 30 miles per hour right now. So I'll let you guys kind of be the judge of that. But honestly, it's been great. There is acoustic laminated glass that does come standard on all trim levels. So that's gonna dent in a lot of the exterior wind noise and road noise, things like that. So in my short little test drive here today, it's been absolutely fine. So no issues there. Touching on visibility, you would think it wouldn't be that great just because of the size of the vehicle, but because of the shape of the Tahoe, I actually can see pretty darn good out the back. Like looking at my rear view mirror right now, it's a massive window back there. So as far as rear visibility goes, it's absolutely amazing. Rain sensing windshield wipers does come standard on every single trim level across the board. So that's gonna assist with forward visibility. And I did wanna mention to you guys, there is a head up display that comes standard on the high country. It's gonna be optional on the Premier. So right now I'm looking at my speed, speed limit and safety features projected up onto my windshield. So helping with forward visibility yet again but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 chevy tahoe all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 chevy tahoe finished in black yes that is the exact exterior color name that chevy went with for this particular color but anyway so creative let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the vin first character is the number one indicating that the chevy tahoe is built and assembled in the u.s as it should be gotta love it but let's go ahead and start up front here to the sides led headlights with led daytime running lights do come standard for all trim levels across the board get the automatic feature with that you also get automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there do want to mention you will get some red recovery hooks if you were to go with that z71 package z71 is also going to add a front skid plate underneath then as well but the high country one of the things i want to point out with the high country you got a bunch of added silver accents and bronze accents along with the high country lettering found on the front grill so i thought that was pretty darn cool but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Tahoe here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Tahoe, all the way to the top, you are going to find some roof rails up there. We got some added crossbars, of course, as well. So that's pretty cool. Rear privacy glass does, of course, come standard on this one. You got some chrome belt line molding as well. Gotta love that high country badging found on the front fenders. I think that's a nice little added touch. But then in typical Chevy fashion, they do got the Tahoe lettering found on the front door. Chevy does that for almost all their vehicles so as expected take a look at the side mirrors body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard but they will be heated as well so i liked seeing that but take a look at these running boards because running boards does come standard but power deployable running boards specifically for our high country trim level so that's pretty cool so when you open the door they will automatically deploy then and i gotta say they are kind of needed it is a big step to get up into the tahoe that is one thing i noticed when i was driving this one is you do sit up pretty high you sit up high like a truck basically like you're driving a silverado so I kind of like that. But again, that is one reason why the running boards are probably standard across the board. But anyways, then taking a look at the wheel setup, they will differ drastically depending upon the trim level that you go with, of course. 18 inch aluminum alloys for the LS and LT. 22 inch machine finished aluminum alloys for the RST and the High Country. So you guys are looking at that right now. 20 inch machine finished alloys for the Z71 and then 20 inch polished alloys for the Premier. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile here. So now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Tahoe, this is a pretty cool looking setup here. So all the way up top, you will find a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, but you're probably wondering, where's the rear window wiper? The typical Tahoe and Suburban fashion, they actually tuck it up underneath so it doesn't impede your rear visibility. So I love that. So that's where the rear window wiper is gonna be located. That's pretty cool. We do have some optional black badging on our particular configuration with us here today. It's a little bit extra, but LED taillights, you gotta love that. They definitely look good and they do come standard for all trim levels across the board, by the way. So I love that, but single exhaust outlet for all trim levels, but the Premier and the High Country, because if we go down here a little bit lower for the Premier and High Country, you will find dual exhaust outlets with quad tips. 
that's pretty darn cool. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Right, so now since we are around to the back of the Tahoe, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a hands-free power lift gate for the LT trim level and up. So the second from the bottom trim level gets hands-free power lift gate. That's pretty darn cool. The LS is gonna get a manual lift gate in case you were curious, but of course it is hands-free, but it is a power lift gate. There's a button on the tailgate itself or a lift gate itself. There's also a button on the key fob then as well. But once opened up, this is where it really gets impressive. Behind that third row, cargo space comes in at 25.5 cubic feet. Behind that second row, that bumps it up to 72.6 cubic feet. And then with all rows folded, 122.9 cubic feet. So that is, of course, more than the Traverse. It's more than the Grand Highlander. It's, of course, more than the Palisade, the Telluride, the Highlander, the Pilot, all of those. So that is a ton of space. I'm telling you guys. Of course, you get cargo lighting back there. There's uh, grocery bag hooks. There's some tie-down anchors. There's actually in-floor storage for all trim levels across the board. And in our particular high country, at least, I did manage to find 115 volt power outlet back there as well so plenty going on in the cargo area but then making our way up to the third row legroom that comes in at an impressive 34.9 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall the third row is definitely doable for adults so i absolutely love that rear ventilation in case you're curious it comes on the ceiling of this thing for all three rows so i did like that plenty of cup holders found in that third row as well along with usb charging ports for both sides in the third row so big fan of that the overall third row was done plenty fine in the tahoe without a doubt but then making our way up to the second row of that groom that comes in at 42 inches even again for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there yet again usb charging ports do come standard for those second row passengers as well captain's chairs for the premier and high country trim levels that's why we have those today so you got the center walkthrough in the middle but bench seating for all other trims in case you were curious about that heated second row for the premier and high country trim levels as well definitely was a big fan of that so again overall for the second row passengers it was done plenty fine the only thing that i was kind of missing was rear window sunshades. i think they probably would have done pretty darn good for at least our high country trim level um they would have been massive because these are massive side windows there but none Nonetheless, I think they would have been a nice addition to the Tahoe, but then making our way up to the front seats, cloth seating for the LS, leather seating for the LT, RST, Z71, Premier, and High Country, so basically all the other seats, tailway power adjustable front seats coming standard, heated front seats for the LT trim level and up, and the ventilated front seats for the Premier and High Country that we have today. So. Overall, my short little test drive here, seating was plenty comfortable. Not gonna have any issues with taking this thing on a long road trip. The other cool thing about the seating is, at least in our high country, we got the high country badging found in the headrest, so that was pretty cool too. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped that comes standard across the board. It's gonna be power adjustable for the Premier and high country and then heated for the Premier and high country then as well. So now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. This is a pretty nice nice key you got your chevy logo on the one side it's kind of a texturized finish on that one side then when you flip it over lock unlock that remote start that does come standard for up and up and across the board but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up this is a full digital gauge cluster and the intro looks intense i love the fall I love the fall foliage that is displayed on both the gauges and the infotainment screen when we first start this one up. That looks absolutely amazing. But of course, since it is digital gauges, it is completely customizable. There's a bunch of different things you could check out up there. So there's a cool little section called display layout where you have the options between classic, progressive, digital, and clean. So that is where you can completely change the look of the gauges and it is a drastic difference depending upon what selection that you go with there. I'm just playing around with it right now. Let me go ahead and try progressive here. That's pretty cool. I think I like the progressive actually, but there's of course classic as well. But anyways, it gives you everything you want up there. There's a digital speed readout if you wanted to go that route. There's of course trip A, trip B, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. So again, everything you could possibly want 
on a digital gauge cluster. So anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here. Panoramic power sunroof is gonna be optional. We got that option. It's part of the High Country Deluxe Package, which goes for $4,710. Gives you the power panoramic uh, moonroof there. It gives you the adaptive air ride suspension that we had with us here today. Power retractable assist steps and a bunch of other stuff as well. So anyways, universal home remote coming on the LT trim level and up. That's gonna be found just below the rear view mirror there for up to three different garage doors. Wireless phone charger for the LT trim level and up as well. This located just in front of the cup holders there. Along with that, you have a 12 volt power outlet, a couple USB charging ports. Of course, the cup holders are located just behind that. And within the center armrest, there's actually a pretty good bit of space in there as you would expect in a vehicle the size of the Tahoe. But overall, as far as finishes go, at least in our high country trim level here today, we got some uh, wood look finish. I don't know if it's authentic wood or if it's plastic, but it looks good nonetheless. A lot of soft touch material like found on the center armrest here as well as on the doors. A lot of brown contrast stitching throughout this one as well. So overall interior quality, it's perfectly fine. Definitely not gonna have any issues with that. But now let's go ahead and take a look at that infotainment screen. And so an eight inch color touch screen display is going to come on the LS. However, for every single other trim level, the LT and up, that's gonna give you a 10.2 inch color touch screen display. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay does come standard across the board. I like that. Factory navigation system for the LT trim level and up. You can adjust your uh, climate control settings up there as well. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are three of them. Six speakers is gonna come standard on the LS. Nine speaker Bose sound system for the LT, RST, and Z71. Then lastly, a 10 speaker Bose sound system for the Premier and High Country trim levels. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. We do have that 10 speaker Bose sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, pretty intense amount of bass there. I will say that clarity wasn't as good as some of the other optional sound systems that I test out in other vehicles, but the bass was definitely on point. So definitely pretty cool there. And one other thing before we continue further, I just noticed this. I don't want to forget to mention this super secret hidden kind of storage area just to the right of that infotainment screen. I almost missed it, but it's a little thing. You just press a little button and it opens right up. So it's it's definitely that James Bond hidden area that uh, Chevy tends to do with their vehicles for whatever reason, but I like it. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Tahoe in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. We got the panoramic view monitor there to the left as well, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me start by saying the Tahoe is not yet tested by IIHS for whatever reason. So I can't comment on that, but front side side gearing airbags do come standard in the back. You're going to have latch AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, high pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard forward collision alert, a following distance indicator, front pedestrian braking, front and rear park assist. You got to love that in the vehicle of this size, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, and a teen driver mode as as well, which prevents the teen driver from turning off safety features. If somehow they manage to do it, it's gonna log that into the system so you know about it. But anyways, overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Tahoe, you got tons of space. That's really the main selling point for this beast. Tons of cargo space, 122 cubic feet. That is just about more than everything but the Suburban. Also a usable third row, which is pretty darn impressive in itself. Very quiet interior because of that acoustic glass I was mentioning to you guys. Plenty of power in this thing, especially the high country that we have. Sub six seconds, zero to 60 time of the vehicle of this size is absolutely insane. But on the downside of that, I guess uh, it's not quite as fuel efficient as some of the competition, of course, but that's the trade off with that. And it is a little bit pricey as well. So I kind of expected a little more luxury with uh, an $82,000 SUV, which is kind of where this one specs out at. There's a lot of a uh, kind of black plastic, like for example, the shift buttons here, they could have been finished in like a smooth silver finish here, as opposed to the matte black plastic, or even this little hidden door area that could have been the same thing or even surrounding the cup holders. Again, it's matte black plastic. So Chevy, what I'm trying to get at, you're going to finish something in a plastic, at least give it a cool kind of silver texturized design maybe, but anything but a matte gray or black plastic really, um, because for the price of this thing, I just expected a little bit more in terms of the luxury finishes on the inside. That's all I'm saying, but let me know what you guys think of the title in the comment section below. 
that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in any new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.